Okay, so welcome to class this morning. Thank you for coming, for being here. Uh, this week, the theme is a sacroiliac joint. And some people know exactly what that is. Other people are sort of unsure about it. But I promise you by the end of this week, you will know what your sacroiliac joint is and why you even should care about it. But for class today, you would be great to have a roller. We're actually going to start with the roller. Definitely have a squishy ball, and even a TheraBand would be good to have nearby. And we're actually going to start uh, laying on your back. You keep your roller right here with you, and just put your feet over it onto the other side of it for the moment while you're laying on your back. And then you just want to settle into position here. Take a breath in, and then exhale. And just let your body settle into your floor. And another breath in, and exhale. Nice long neck at the back. Relax through the body, let the spine just sort of settle into the floor underneath you. Don't try and hold it in any which way, just have it settled there. Good, keep breathing in, and then exhale. And just really let the tailbone get heavy, let the pelvis get heavy on the, on the floor there. If you can, bring the feet and knees all the way together. If that's hard, you can actually, either way, together with a little pressure or with the ball between your knees with a little pressure, whichever feels more comfortable for you. And one more breath in. And exhale. Great. And last one. And exhale. Great. So from here, I'm going to have you moving just into the coccyx curl. But I want you to really think about what we're doing. You're going to take a breath in, exhale, let the belly drop in, and then you're going to really lengthen that tailbone out from underneath you. And just hold with that length. And I want you to put your hands right on your pelvis and feel what's happening in the front here. And you can feel the angle, right? The pubic bone tilts upward, the hip bones are kind of tilted back and down. And then if you reach round, you can feel your tailbone is curling up underneath you. And then you're going to inhale, release your way back to that neutral position. Exhale, belly drops in, tailbone curls, and you're going to roll into that coccyx curl. Inhale, and come back down. Great. So keep going with that, and I'll just explain a little bit about what's happening here. As you're going into that tilt, you're actually tilting your pelvis. Might make sense. Starting with the tailbone at the very bottom, and then inhaling back down. And we're moving as one unit. We're moving the whole pelvis as one unit, which we can do from the spine and with the abs here. We can also move one side on the other. So I'll show you how that works in a little bit here as we get going. The other thing, structures that you have are the pubic bone, which is right in the middle, uh, coming together. And in between there is a little cartilage, kind of like a disc in your back. You keep going here at that curl and then release. So now I want you to squeeze the ball in between your knees, or squeeze your knees together if you don't have that ball, and you're going to just press in and release. Now when you press in, you actually create a little more space in the front of your pelvis, like right at that pubic bone area, right in the middle of it, where that disc is, or the pubic synthesis we call it. Right, so here, you're going to go ahead and press in, and then you're going to lengthen through the tail and curl upward. Great. And the other thing that happens when we start activating that inner thigh, just because of the way that we're connected, we actually get a little bit more of a pelvic floor contraction without even thinking about it. So what I'm going to have you think about it for a moment. You're going to exhale, press that ball in. I want you to think about pulling up inside in your pelvic floor. So that would be like doing a cable or imagining that some of these, your muscles are pulling up from your bottom all the way up into your belly button and then release, right? Press in on that ball, pulling up and in. And then release, and press in on that ball, pulling up and in, and then release. And now if you can, you can turn your feet inward and toes towards each other, heels out. Now press on that ball, that should actually help you even more, get a little more of that pelvic floor lift inside. So inside that pelvic region, we have a lot of muscles that do work for us in stability, believe it or not. We have 
definitely in women, the vaginal muscles that can help hold up the internal organs. Uh, we also have the muscles and the ligaments and the fascia that close the bottom of our core. And those are the muscles we're after in order to help us stabilize from below. Great, so keep that feeling of that pelvic floor lift that you've created, but turn your feet back to the neutral position. We're gonna take that coccyx go all the way up into a bridge, and I want it to stay pretty low. I want it to be driven by your glutes, by your hamstrings. Stomach still pulling in. And then while you're here, just take your arms up to the sky. We're just going to open up the chest a little bit here by taking them up and then overhead. And then bring the arms back. Keep holding that bridge. Keep sinking the tummy, squeezing those glutes upward, reaching overhead and back up. Reaching overhead and coming back. Reach overhead. Bring it back. And hold with that reach overhead. You're going to stretch your way down your spine one vertebra at a time, all the way down to the floor. Great. So I'm going to have you take the ball out from in between your knees, and then you're going to roll your way up again. So exhaling, roll your way back into that bridge. Now I said, as we were coccyx filling out, we're moving the pelvis as one unit. We did that again here. Where we start challenging that is when we take one leg up. So I'm going to have you hold steady and bring one leg to table jump. Now we have our pelvis doing two different things. The one on the bottom is staying neutral straight. The one at the top has to tilt a little bit more. But we don't want our hips to drop. So holding there and then bring it back down. Make sure that you're level and switch sides. Yes. Bring it down. Make sure you're level and switch sides. So this is a lot more like what we do in everyday walking, uh, stepping. This is the action that our pelvis does. When we're sitting or squatting, we're using both together, both sides together. When we're walking, running, skipping, hopping, that's all one at a time or one side at a time and in opposing directions. Good. Keep alternating legs. Keep squaring yourself off every time you bring the leg down. Make sure you're level. Good. And last one, evening yourself out. Good. And then you're going to roll your way all the way down. Well done. Okay. So here, I'm going to have you go ahead and lift those hips up. Slide the roller in underneath you. And I'm going to have you stay here for just a moment with me. You're going to take a breath in. Exhale, pull the belly in and move a little bit into the coccyx curl here. Right, so I'm going to feel a big stretch across, well, I do feel a big stretch across my quads. If you don't, slot those heels in a little bit more. You're going to really squeeze the glutes in underneath you, and then you're going to settle back down. When you settle down, you should feel heavy through your back, right? And there's a spot at your sacrum, which is uh, right, sort of that triangle right underneath your pelvis that you should feel like you have both sides of that down on the roller. So we're going to go coccyx curl again here. Squeeze the glutes and then release. Great, coccyx curl. And then release, great. Keeping that neck long, shoulders wide. Let's bring both your legs to tabletop position, holding there. Stomach's dropping in. I'm going to have you turn out to a little bit of a frog. Squeeze those heels together, and then you're going to press the legs out, holding that position there. So squeeze and press those inner thighs together, and then bend back in. Squeeze the heels. Exhale, press. <clears throat> Zip up from the inside of those inner thighs, and bring the legs back in. And here we go, a little faster. Press, squeeze, and in. Press, squeeze, and in. Great. So here, that turnout is actually helping activate a lot of the muscles that connect to your sacrum. Good. Keep going here. Squeeze, press, and bend. Squeeze, press. Nice. And bend. Squeeze, press, and bend. Squeeze, press. Hold those legs straight. They're going to travel up. And then lower down. You've got to keep control over your center so you don't want your tummy pooching, right? So only take the legs down as far as you can go with the stomach still in. 
the degree too long, and up, and reach, and up, and reach, and up, and reach, and up. You're going to open, circle down together, down together, down together. Great. Keep going nice and steady. So now we're using our hips equally on both sides. That pelvis should be stable, that sacrum stable. Good. Reversing. Good. Down and down. Open. Down, open, down, open, and down, open. Good. Holding at the top. Excellent. We're going to go ahead and drop one leg down. One leg stays up. Now, pay attention here. You want your both your hip bones still pointed straight up. Right? Stretching those legs along. Great. And now what you're getting is one side of your pelvis tilting forward. The leg up. The one uh, forward is the leg down side and back is the leg up. Right, so we're going opposite directions, but the bowler's hoping hold that back of you stable here. And then just hold there for a moment. Keep breathing. Keep trying to straighten up that top leg. Great, let's come together. Square everything off and switch sides. Drop in that belly, really stretching to the other side. Strong, straight legs. Good. Keep reaching along, Great. and we're going to go ahead up and switch, pulse nice and steady, switch controlled. Good, holding everything stable, pulse and switch. So the movement is really the hips in the pelvis, good, switch, pulse, switch, pulse, switch, pulse, switch, pulse, switch, Pulse, switch, pulse, and switch. Pulse, one more each side. Switch, pulse, and hold the top. Let's open up to the center, let those inner thighs stretch open. You can give them a little more help with your hands on the legs if you want more stretch. Holding there. Excellent. And then bring the legs up. We're going to bend the knees in. Take one leg down to the floor. Just keep it bent. Pull that heel in as much as you can, and then stretch the other leg straight up. So you should feel a good stretch on the quad of the leg that's down. Make sure the knee's pointed in a straight line. And then you're going to take it, the other leg down, around, and up. So careful here that you don't come off the roller on the side of the leg down. So really stabilizing with that side as you circle around. Great. So now again, hip rolling in the socket. Your job is to keep the pelvis really still. Yeah? And let's reverse. Around, open, down, across, up, open, around, across, up, open, and across, up, open. Nice. And then let's switch sides. Stretch the other leg up. This leg is in, knee pointed straight, pulled into a stretch. And here we go, around and circle and around and circle and around. Circle, nice job, holding steady everywhere else. So our sacrum and SI joint can get upset. We're going to switch directions here. If the muscles that go into that area are too tight or pulling, that's why loosening up the muscles all around the area really helps release the SI joint. So here we're loosening up all the muscles around the hip. So when your leg goes down, it's muscles in the front, so as in the arcus. When we come around the side, we're opening the inner thighs. And then from the back, we're going to spend some time opening up the piriformis and the hips. Great. Go ahead and take both legs up again. You're going to cross over, bring the knee in, and let this come into a stretch here. You can press the knee wide, and just let the weight of your leg press in towards you. You can try to increase the stretch by sticking your tail back out at the roller as you hold this position here. 
If you want to add a little more hamstring, you can straighten up the leg instead. It's up, totally up to you on that one. Great. And then we're going to switch both legs up, cross over. And you can bend it in, or you can straighten it up, whichever one is your preference. Try and push that knee wide. Keeping the butt down, so don't let the pushing wide twist you. You want to keep both sides square here. You might have one side that's a lot tighter than the other. That is quite, quite common. And then go ahead, keep your knee that's bent close to your chest. Drop the other leg down. Let that hip really stretch open, so really reaching long through that leg. If you want to add to this, the top leg can go straight. If you don't, you can keep it bent. And then we're going to just take this leg slightly across. And the goal is to stretch that outside butt, really, of the leg that's across. Try and take your hand, push the hip down and away a little bit. Breathe into that stretch. Feel like a nice, good stretch here. And then we're going to switch. So bend the knee, bring it to your chest. Both knees in. One leg straight down and out. And then your choice is to straighten or keep that top leg bent. And then you're going to take it across. Ooh, I need this stretch. You're going to take your thumb, push the hip away a little bit. Really opening up. Good. Breathing into that stretch. One more nice breath here. And then bring the knee in towards your chest. Excellent. Let's go ahead and take the roller out. Place your feet on it. And if you need a little more stability, I would recommend putting the ball back between your knees here. If not, just holding parallel is absolutely fine. You're going to take a breath in. You're just going to press those hips up to the sky. Okay, the focus is the back side. I want you to think about bringing your bottom towards its midline. So you're wrapping in towards midline, but at the same time, keeping some, keeping those knees straight if you don't have the ball or some pressure on the ball if you do. And then you're going to just let the heels roll away a little bit and back. And as you go, you'll notice that if the rolling is a little further away each time, that's okay. You're going to just go with it. You're holding steady. You want to keep thinking about pulling the glutes in underneath you towards your middle. You can go as far as you want with this, but you, I want you to feel stable. If you can really go, you can let the legs go straight and bring them back, but you don't have to go that far, right? Just keeping stable. Good. Keeping steady through that back side. You should start to feel it working back there. Good. One last time. And then walk those legs all the way back in and sit the hips back down. Well done. Okay. So here, I'm going to have you take the roller out of the way. And then you want to keep that ball with you. You're going to put it between your ankles this time. We're going to just work uh, through the center of our body uh, for a little bit, get those abs on, and then we'll come back to that sacrum. You're going to take a breath in here, turn the feet slightly out, and press the legs outward and bring them back. Exhale, press. Inhale, back. Exhale, press. Inhale back. Keep some pressure on that ball. Use the turnout to help you here. Inhale back. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale back. And exhale, really dropping through your center. Inhale back. Great. If you can, you're going to add the upper portion of this. If that's not okay, just keep with what we were just doing. Hands behind your neck. You're going to stretch long. Exhale, press. Chest rolls up. Rib cage down. And reverse. Now, if you're rolling your head up, you should be able to take those legs a little bit lower and bring it back. Exhale, press. Inhale, back. Exhale, stomach drop, squeeze. Use that turn out. Inhale, back. Exhale, press. Inhale, back. And exhale, press. Excellent. Hold it there. Legs come up. Two, three, four. 
five, six, seven, and eight. Great job. And bend your way in. Take your hands onto your knees if you can. You're going to exhale and press away, chest drops, coming into an upper ab position. If that's hard on your neck, please support it or rest it down. We're going to go for double leg stretch here. You're going to use parallel this time with those legs. So holding this position, belly drops. Stretch out, hold there, drop the belly, reach long through the arms, through the legs, circle and grab the knees in. Exhale, reach, circle. Exhale out, 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 circle. And exhale out. Circle one last, out and circle. Relax your upper body down, comes up. Great, so from here, you're gonna go ahead and keep that ball with you, and I'm gonna have you roll right to your belly. Great. There you go, and you wanna keep that ball between the ankles. It's okay if it's holding your feet off the ground a little bit, no big deal at all. You're going to relax that upper body down. Don't worry about that for right now. Just a comfortable position there. And I want you to think about what's going on in this lower half. So here, pubic bone should be in the floor. Your tailbone's reaching long. Your tummy's trying to lighten off the floor, right? So trying to lift away from the floor. But more important is that pelvis reaching long. I'm going to have you take a breath in. Exhale, stretch those legs as long as you can away from you. Turn the feet out and squeeze that ball. You're not lifting, you're just squeezing. And then release. Right? Exhale, squeeze. And you can lift your kneecaps up off the floor, but everything else stays. You're going to just squeeze and wrap and release. Exhale, squeeze and wrap. And what you want to feel is that you're, again, the bottom is kind of moving towards that midline. Here we're using those hip rotators with the turnout to help us and release. Squeeze, and release, and squeeze. Great, keep that feeling. See if you can turn your feet parallel. Tuck those toes under now, but keep that feeling of the wrapping of the glutes. Lift the knees up, and relax. And lift the knees up, keep squeezing them up, and relax. And exhale, lift those knees up, pivot bones down, and relax. And exhale, lift those knees up. Keep pressure on that ball. Can you point your toes and float the legs up now? And down. Straight legs up and down. Reach long up and down. Reach and up and down. Stomach keeps protecting that lower back, but I do want you to feel like your glutes are doing some work here. So stretch those legs long up and down. Up and down. Up and down. And up and down. Excellent. Bend those knees. Bring the heels towards each other. Knees go a little bit wide. You're going to squeeze that ball. And keep squeezing. Don't do anything else. Don't lift. Just keep the knees down. Squeeze. Pubic bones down. Keep squeezing that ball. But then as you squeeze, you should start to develop kind of a warmth in the back area here, like right over your glutes. And that's your SI joint, right? So keep squeezing, don't lift. Keep more and more pressure, gradually increasing pressure on the ball. Keep pressing. Good, keep pressing. Good, now keep holding that. Can you now pulse up? Two, three, use those glutes. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And relax your way back down. Ooh, nice job. Okay, so here, you can move the ball out of the way. Don't, don't let it go too far away. Just out for now. And you're going to take a breath in. Stretch those legs along. You're going to press your right leg down. Pick up your left leg off the floor. Try and keep your hip bone down. So you're only going to lift up as much as you can with both hips down. And bring the leg back to the floor. Press down left. Push your pelvis into the table or the floor. And leg up. Switching sides. Press the pelvis down to lift up. And switch sides. Up, down, alternating. Keep that knee straight. Reach it long. 
down, up, 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 and down, up. Last one, down and up. Nice job. Take a break. Great. Let's tuck those toes underneath. You're going to bring your hands in underneath you as well. Uh, if you can't press all the way up to your toes, you can go to your knees, no problem. You're going to take a breath, then exhale. Press your way up to your plank, holding there. Good. So now in this position, see if you can find that glute feeling we had. You can turn your feet out, squeeze the heels. Whether your knees are bent or straight, doesn't matter. Do the same. Squeeze and hold. Good. See if you can get the glutes to turn on for you here. They're going to do some work to help you stay. Good. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Good. Keep squeezing. Stomach, so lifting to help support. Keep squeezing those glutes. Yes, you've got this. A little more squeeze those heels. Good. And relax your way down. Excellent. You're going to grab your ball again. I told you not to let yours go too far. Mine went far away. Good. This time on your side. You're going to bring it in between your ankles. Right on your side here. So here, I'm going to try, and you can stay up on your form, or you can go down on your uh, elbow, which is absolutely fine. Both are great. You're going to think about really trying to pick up this underside and really stack your pelvis one hip over the other. So I'm going to keep these the hips stacked. I'm going to squeeze that ball here and release. Squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. Squeeze. And release, squeeze. Good. Now, as you're squeezing, I want you to think about squeezing from the back as well. So you're going to squeeze the front, using those bigger muscles in the back. And squeeze. That's it. Squeeze. 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 And squeeze. Now, that was too easy, right? So here, we're going to lift up both legs and lower. Keep them working together. Lift. And lower. Now focus the work behind you, right? Lift and lower. Lift and lower. Nice long straight legs. And lower. Keep the stable in the back. And lower. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. Lift and lower and lift and lower. Well done. Here, you're going to take a little bend into your knees. And you're going to lift the heels up, keeping the knees down, or that bottom knee down in the equal space. You can, or you could rest both knees. That's okay, too. And down. Rotate. And release. Rotate. So try and keep that pelvis still. Rotate. And release. Rotate. Good job. Rotate. Great. Rotate, good, rotate, do two more, rotate, and rotate, nice job. Let's take the ball away for the moment. You're going to bend your knees a little more. If you want a little more challenge and you have a TheraBand nearby, you can wrap that around your legs here. If not, no worries at all, you don't need it. You're going to keep your heels together, and you're going to rotate open into your clam. There, right? So maybe a little more difficult. Use that band if you want. Okay. And open. Good. Now keep that, those heels together. Great. So now this is actually the opposite of the squeezing the ball that we did earlier. The squeezing the ball was opening the front of your pelvis, the pubic bone. This is actually opening the back of the pelvis by having this pressure around the thighs as we open. Good. Rotate. So different kind of challenge. Good. Rotate. And rotate. Rotate. The sacroiliac joint are mainly held in place by ligaments. Right? Ligaments 
uh, have to hold those bones together, the sacrum and the ilia on both sides. Great, relax. And you can go ahead and remove that. We're going to take the legs up a little bit further here into kind of a 90 degree to your torso position. Take that top leg, stretch it out. Good. Keep the hips seated back and down. You're going to pulse up two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're going to circle two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Reverse one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Figure eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and reverse. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Nice. Take this top foot. You have a choice. You can just rest it down in front, or if you want to get a good stretch, you can rotate it open here. And we're going to stretch that bottom leg out and kick it up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lovely. We're going to go ahead, switch sides all the way around. Start with your ball again in between your ankles. Set yourself up however you are on the other side. Stomach's lifted. You're going to start by squeezing that ball again. And squeeze. Ooh, my legs are out of control. You just squeeze. And squeeze. Stomach tight, body long. Squeeze. And squeeze. Squeeze. And squeeze, 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 and squeeze. Nice. All right, this one, you're lifting both legs up and down, holding steady up. So I was telling you, it's mostly ligamentous back there that's holding the joints together. And sometimes those ligaments get stretched out. Could be from, for women, a lot has to do with childbirth and even pregnancy can do that. Um, for athletes, it can happen if they're really loose, or some people just happen to be more loose than others. So when that happens, the only thing back there to help you hold together are muscles. So it's really important that the muscles stay strong in that area. Good hold there. You're going to bend the knees, and you're going to rotate up. Yes. Rotate. Rotate. So all these exercises really target that area. And it's great to get that area really nice and strong. And then I promise by the end of this week, you'll know also how to release that area when it gets all wound up. Because we're doing a good job winding it up right now. Great. Good. One more here. Nice job. All right. Take that ball out. You can switch to the band if you want. We're going to bend the knees a little bit more and wrap the band around. And we're going to the clam. So here, you're going to stack the feet, keep the heels pressed together, and then you're going to rotate that top knee open. Good. Heels together. Great. I'll tell you a secret. This is my least favorite exercise in the whole repertoire, I think, is right here. This one. When I first did clams, I couldn't even get my knee open. <laughs> so I only do it when I'm with you. <laughs> so thank you. Great. And then relax, because I absolutely need it, which is why I don't like it. All right, so here we go. Bend the knees all the way up. Stretch that top leg out. We're going to pulse up. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and circle. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and reverse. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, figure eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and reverse. You've got this. Three, four, come on, five, six, seven, 
and eight. Nice job. Go ahead and bring that leg down or rotate it open for that stretch. And you're going to stretch the bottom leg out underneath. Long and kick it up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Well done. All right. Go ahead and roll right over to your belly again. We're going to go onto hands and knees here. So find that good position on your hands and knees where you feel secure and stable. Stomach is tight. I'm going to have you slide one leg out behind you. Float it up and really focus on keeping that pelvis level. And then you're going to bend the knee foot to the sky. Good. It's really important you don't roll open here. You want to keep the pelvis square. Try and keep equal weight on both hands. That's challenging, I know. And you're going to press the heel up. Two, three. Four, five, stomach tights, so you're not overarching the back. Eight, nine, and ten. Go ahead and reverse, replace it back down. And then we're going to slide the other leg out. I like to go toes out all the way. Stretch your, um, set your body still. Stretch that leg, float it up. Focus on keeping the line. Bend the knee, and up you go again. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And bring it back in. All right. So here you're going to hold steady again. This one's, I think, even more challenging. You're going to press the floor away, lift up strong through your tummy, and slide the leg out to the side and back in. Open and in. Good. Really focus on your stability. Don't worry about how high or low that leg is, or how far you're opening it. More important is your posture. Good, holding. Open, squeeze. Open, squeeze, squaring your body off. Squeeze, open, squeeze, and open, and squeeze. Good, stop there, recollect yourself, and we're gonna press that floor away again, Lift up the other leg, and out it goes. Open, squeeze, try to keep that body really square, steady. Don't worry about how high that leg is going. Really just think about your nice all fours posture. Imagining that leg was right there underneath you. What would that feel like? Open, squeeze, open, squeeze, open, squeeze, open, squeeze. Open, squeeze, open, squeeze. Keep pushing that floor away. One last time here. And squeeze it down. Well done. Okay, we're going to tuck your toes underneath. And you're going to move into a little knee lift. So you're going to take a breath in. Exhale, float those knees up off the table, off your floor here. And just hang here for a minute. Really stick the tail out the back. You're going to shift backwards and then back to, front, to the original starting position. Shift your weight back and bring it forward. Shifting back and bring it forward. Nice job. Back and bring it forward. And back and bring it forward. Great. I want you to take your feet in a little closer underneath you. You can widen them out a little bit as well. You're going to shift back and sit down into your squat, if you can. Yeah, so just shifting back into that squat. You're going to hold there. If you can, really try and sink those heels. And try and make the knees come more forward rather than really far sideways, if you can. You're going to do your best there. If you're having trouble, if you feel like you're going to fall backwards, really think about lifting the chest and opening the front of you. Right, so I'm going to lift the chest, open the front of me, really work to sink those heels down. You can use pressure. You can press in on your elbows with your knees and out with your elbows on your knees as well. So you've got this con connected pressure. That's going to help you lift your spine tall. That's it. Well done. Good. So get comfortable here. This low squat really helps open and release that SI joint. 
and it, it actually opens up and releases it for you. You want to work to keep that back along. Now here's the challenge. You ready? We're going to try and stand up a little bit from here. So you can push into your legs, bring your chest up so you lighten your weight on your feet. And you're just going to press up a tiny bit and go right back down. Yep, here we go. Just a tiny press and back down. Nice job. Tiny press and back down. Tiny press and back down. And here we go. Press and back down. Good. Let's take your hands back in front of you. <clears throat> Reach them out a little ways. You're going to press back up. Let your legs straighten up behind you. can't stand on the floor. You can walk your feet back. And let's open up the back of those legs. Those calves stretching open. Sinking the heels. Wrapping the elbows and shoulders in. Take a deep breath. Let's pedal out your feet. So really open up the calf. And then switch sides. Open up the other leg. Big breath in. And then exhale. Try and drop both heels back down. Really opening up the backs of those legs. Great. And then I'm going to have you take those steps in one more time. Bend the knees. Feet a little wider. Bend those knees and sit right back down into that squat. Should feel easier this time, yeah? Great. We're going to take a breath in. Exhale, squeeze and stand all the way up this time. Great. And then you're going to come all the way back down and take your hands behind you so you can have a seat on the floor. Great. So the last stretch for today, you're going to sit with your leg just at an angle in front of you. And then you're going to go ahead and take the other leg, if you can, and cross it over. No, this is, I'm giving away my tightest secret here. For those of you who are flexible, that knee's going to fall down. It takes me a while. If it's too much, you can just do it on the floor in front. You don't even have to. You can do one leg at a time and just let that try and open. Yeah, if it's too much. Or crossing over. You want to try and get both butts on the floor. Yeah, the further away the leg is from you, that bottom leg, the harder it gets. So you're going to just sit here, try and lift up tall, and try and drop the butt of the leg that's up. Breathing into that stretch, lifting up the back and the head. Good, and with every breath, just try and release a little bit more. Watch if the ankle is not getting twisted too much. You want to really keep that ankle strong so you're not twisting the foot ankle. Yeah, as well. Great. One more breath here. And then we're going to go ahead and switch sides. So taking that leg off the top, set up your bottom leg. Further away from you, the harder it gets, actually. So if you can, if you have some room, you can do push it away. You're going to flex both ankles really nice and strong. Sit the hip down. Good. And then let your breath work in, sitting up tall. And exhale. Try and sink that butt down. Up tall. And exhale. And one more time. And exhale. Great. And then go ahead and uncross those legs. You can shake them out. And you have survived again. So thank you so much. I hope that you feel like you have some new muscles to work on that you worked on today. And I will see you again later.